So here is another uh, sample question for a sample scenario question for construction of a Turing machine, right? Yeah, it is the construction of Turing machine. And uh, equity trader invested in three stocks sequentially. He then realized that during a market crash, so he is investing in three, uh, three stocks actually. So we can have it as A, B, and C. And whenever he invests in the third stock with the same quantity as that of first, he could make a reasonable profit. So he invested in third stock with the quantity of N. So third stock he have invented in, uh, invested as N and uh, see it is same quantity as that of first stock. So first and last are matching. Okay, help the investor to diagrammatically represent of, of the suitable uh, Turing machine that would accept if the investment would yield a reasonable profit of satisfying the above criteria. Uh, it will be having a lot of questions into it here. Just look into the question properly. So here it is mentioned that there is three stocks and out of which we are comparing only two, first and second. And sometimes they will be comparing all the three. Some of the question like he's uh, investing, equity trader is investing in the first two stock with the same price. And during market cash, like he is going to invest in the third stock with the same quantity. So it means it is A power in B power in C power in condition. Okay, something like this. Okay, so you should be able to convert the scenario to a problem first. Then once the language is different, then it will be an easy thing for you to construct a Turing machine. Now, this give, according to the scenario, we have three stocks and we haven't spoken about the second stock as a whole. He then realized that during the market stock, his third stock and the first stock should have the same element. Okay, with the same quantity of first and third, it is same. And the quantity of third he invested is N. So first also, he's going to invest it as N. So this is your language description. So this language is, we can compare two elements. So this comes under your PDA2. We can construct a push-down automata and we can construct a Turing machine too. So the language is context-free language. Okay, so when you are able to compare only two elements, we can have a stack as a memory unit. Push all your A's inside. Whenever B comes, do nothing. And whenever C comes, pop one A for one C. Finally, at the end of your input, if your stack is empty or uh, your, the transition is in final state, accept it. So that is your push-down automata category. And when you want to construct a Turing machine, what can be done when you want to construct a Turing machine is uh, we can have a T, like uh, whenever a Turing machine, the working is like this. He'll be having infinite tape as a memory unit and he'll be having N number of A's and you can have any number of B's, B's doesn't matter and N number of C's. Okay, so finally, you'll be having the black symbol. Okay, so this is your scenario and whenever you start the transition, the transition should be in Q0. So one thing that can be done here is I can read a a i will go back until i find a c cancel it read a a find a c cancel read a a find a c cancel so when you're coming back if the inputs are all already read okay if there is a b or if there is an cancelled c the input will be accepted okay so that is how we have to do it so i'll construct an uh, turing machine for it q naught is a starting state so in Q0, I'm going to scan a A. The matching thing should be A and C has to be matched, right? So when I scan a A, A will be canceled as X, move right. So I'm just going to use a special symbol for cancellation. So first in Q0, when the input is A, A will be canceled as X and we are making a transition to Q1 state. So Q1 is a place where I have to find a C. So in between, I can have any number of A's. So any number of A's, A will remain as it is more right. If I have a B, B also will remain as it is more right. Until we find a transition uh, as C, we are making this transition. Okay, and once we found a C in Q1, we are going to this Q2 state. So for this A, this C will be cancelled. Okay, your transition is looking like, first we have cancelled this A to x and the remaining input in the table remain as it is b will remain as it is and once we reach a c so this c will be cancelled as y i'll just use a different symbol for cancellation so for one a one c is cancelled now what we have to do next step i have to come back and take the transition right so it is coming back for one a 
I have moved right side until I find a C. One C is cancelled. I have to come back and take the remaining transition. So while coming back, I have to traverse till X to check the next element. Okay. So X is the place where it is representing a cancelled A. So while coming back, I can have a loop. It is all left side move, right? After cancelling, I can have a B, I can have an A. So for all my Bs, B will remain as it is, move left. A, A will remain as it is, move left. And once I reach this X, I'm going to do the same with Q0 state. Okay, so I can make a transition here. And whenever I have this X, X will remain as it is. I make one right side move to take the next element. Okay, so next step, what it do? It is repetition here. So for this A, A will be canceling this to X. I have to scan until I find a C. Okay, so this will be cancelled and we are making a transition to Q1 state. Q0, when the input is A, A will be cancelled to X, moving right to Q1 state. In Q1, I have to find a C. So while coming back, I can have a B, I can have a A or I can have a Y also. Okay, doesn't matter. I keep on moving until I find a C. And once we find a C, C will be cancelled to Y. Okay, and we are going to come back in the loop. So we have two A's cancelled. Okay, and two C's cancelled. Now we have to, after cancelling this, we are reaching the state as Q2. So in Q2, I have to traverse until I reach this X. So in between, I can have a Y or B or A. So for all this step, we keep on moving left until I reach this place. So next, this A will be cancelled and we reach C. This C will be cancelled. Come back till this X. Okay, so Q2, when the input is X, we are going to this Q0 state. Okay, so Q0, when the input is B, it means all the A's are cancelled. So when all the A's are cancelled, it is your acceptance criteria, but we have to verify whether all the C's are also cancelled. Okay, so what we can do, we can have a transition here, Q0, when the input is B, so B will remain as it is, more right, you can have any number of Bs. It doesn't matter here. We are making a transition to Q3 state. Okay. And you can also have that like there is that can be no B also. In case if the input is also Y, it is also fine since we haven't mentioned anything regarding your second stack. So second stack might be empty also. Okay. First and last are matching. So that is the only constraint that is given to you. So sometimes you don't have any B at all. Then also we can have an acceptance criteria. So once we reach this Y, we have to verify whether it is all B or Y here. Okay. If it is all B, move right. If it is all Y, move right. And finally, at the end of transition. So once we reach the blank symbol, blank will remain as it is. And we are going for this acceptance state. Okay, so while coming back, it has to be all B's or Y's. Okay, in case, okay, in case if there is any extra C's left out in Q3, if there is extra C left out, this is your Q reject state. Okay, and also in Q1, if you don't find any C, you have cancelled one A, but you don't have a pair of uh, C here. If it is your blank symbol here, this is also Q reject state. These two are the possible rejection state. Okay, so this is how you have to find a relationship between the given problem and the scenario that is given. And finally, you have to find a solution for it. Okay, thank you.